Hi everyone and welcome to the Maya Learning Channel. As part of our creating an ocean tutorial, I showed you how to generate a realistic looking boat wake using bifrost foam particles. In this appendix, I'm going to expand on that technique to make a big meteoric splash. So back in part one, I used Boss to turn a flat plane into this deforming ocean tile. Then in part four, I used the tile as a guide in order to drive the motion of bifrost particles. I'm going to do the same here. So just like in part 4, I'm going to start by reducing the resolution of the plane, since I'm not actually using it for rendering. Then I'll cache it out, starting from frame 1. This time, I'm going to do an extra step and also export the mesh as an Alembic cache. This will give me the deforming polygon separate from the boss simulation. And once that's done, I'll load up my meteor scene. So here we have a simple scene with a falling sphere representing my meteor. I'll start by importing the alembic file I just created. That gives me an ocean plane without adding a boss simulation to the scene. Next I'll create my bifrost liquid using the exact same process as part 4. So liquid... For a nice high fidelity, I'll set master voxel size to 0.15. Now I have a choice. Do I want to emit particles from my meteor or my ocean? The former has the advantage of generating particles only when near impact, which will significantly improve performance and help with blending. So let's do that. And I'll make it a collider as well. By the way, if you're confused at all, I'd recommend going back to part 4 where I do much more thorough explanations on all this. Next, I'll reduce the collider thickness to 0.1 and emission region thickness to 1. Remember, you want the emission region larger than the collider region. I'm also going to reduce the death age by quite a bit, so the particles only last as long as the splash. And finally, I'll select my ocean plane and make it a guide for the simulation. Now I can run a quick test. Notice that at the beginning of the animation, no particles are generated until the moment the sphere hits the ocean. This is a cute little splash, but let's make it bigger. First, I'm going to increase my emission region thickness to generate more particles sooner for the meteor to smash into. Next, I'm going to look at the guide properties. Here I'm mainly interested in min simulation depth and surface layer. If I want a shallow splash, I can zero out min simulation depth and just use surface layer. This results in only a thin layer of water and a splash like a stone skipping across the surface. Conversely, if I wanted a taller, narrower splash, then I'd keep some depth so there's more water to be displaced. The choice is really up to you depending on the kind of meteor you want to simulate. For the sake of this tutorial, I'll go with the latter. But a depth of 3 is a bit much, so I'll reduce that to 2. And I'll reduce the guide voxel scale a bit for more accuracy. That's not bad, if a bit exaggerated. I can further tweak the height and distance of the splash with the collider's velocity scale. I'll just rein it in a bit so the meteor doesn't hit the water quite so hard. You can use the velocity scale and even additional velocity to sculpt the splash, but I'll leave the exact shape up to you.
And like in part 4, I'll need to greatly increase my emission rate to get lots more foam. And then adjust my lighting to get it to show up. So that's ray depth. And volume shader emission. To density. Cool. Now I'll replay the scene again. And as you can see, I get a much more epic splash. Let's try rendering too. Not bad, not bad. To get the foam a little foamier, I can increase the particle density and make them less transparent. I'm actually pretty happy with this, so let's import my finished ocean from part 2. Recall that this is the vast ocean that I rendered with displacement. Before rendering, I'll just delete this duplicate light source and hide my Alembic cache. Now I get a meteoric splash in the middle of my ocean. However, notice that the two don't quite gel. You can clearly see that these are two different systems layered on top of each other. Traditionally, blending this together would be a job for a compositor in post. You'd give them the splash on one render layer and the ocean on another, and they'd use a software like Flame to meld the two together. However, it is possible to blend them in the render itself. Just a heads up though, this technique that I'm about to show you has its limitations. If you can do the blending in post, then I'd recommend it. But if you can't, then this can get you to a good enough type result. First, select the liquid shape node and scroll down to the render section. Notice that there's an ocean blending section here, which will allow us to blend the bifrost liquid with a displaced plane. However, to avoid messing with my original ocean, I'll first create a new plane, then size it to my original ocean tile. I can always scale it up later if necessary. Now to slot this plane in, first I'll go back to the liquid shape, then turn off Auto Load Selected Attributes. This will let me select my new plane without changing the attribute editor. Then I'll just click Use Selected. Next, notice the out channel is called Ocean. I'll need to add the same channel to the render channels up here, which will allow Arnold to display it at render time. And since the renderer is handling my blending mesh, I can now hide the original. No need to double up on them. Now I'll just click Enable. Now you'll see the Bifrost liquid blending with a flat plane. Again, notice how the renderer shows the ocean tile even though I hid it in the viewport. I can now play with the boundary radius or offsets values to clean up any artifacts. Of course, I don't want to blend with just a flat plane, so it's time to bring back my ocean. I'll do this via the hypershade. First, I'll select the splash's shader and show its connections. Just like in part 2, I'll be adding the ocean as a displacement shader. This time, I'll create a blank one. I can delete the shading group since I already have one, then just plug the shader into the existing group. Now, rather than having to set up the shading network for the spectral waves all over again, I can just steal from my imported ocean file. So I'll select my displacement shader, shift select my imported shader, then show connections. 
I'll just move this up here. Then I can just model my displacement after the existing one. There we go. So that takes care of the ocean waves. The last thing I need to do is the blend. To achieve this, you just need to scale the displacement according to the ocean channel we output earlier. So I'll create an AI user data float node. Set the attribute to ocean. Then feed that result into the displacement's scale value. So scale. And that should do it. Uh, so if the Arnold render view displays in debug mode like this, you can fix it by going to render update full scene. And there you go, our splash and ocean now blend together. Again, this isn't quite perfect. You'll notice that the blend doesn't leave a hole in the ocean where the meteor hits it. For this reason, I'd still recommend doing your blending in post if you can. But if you're only showing the splash from an angle where it doesn't matter, then this technique will work just fine. As always, it depends on your specific situation. And like always, you can render a sequence to see the animated result.